everyone welcome back to another episode of drawing with dave i hope we everyone had a fantastic week i'm excited to get back into working on something tonight so we actually worked on a sketch of this last week and based on the comments from the video itself the highest thumbed up comment come from comes from tony cook and says i would like to see the continuation of this process all the way to color i think we learn a lot from that and tony i agree i think that'd be a great idea i think some of these episodes would be a good idea to do second parts and we can take them further from the initial sketch because i still think people can learn at every single stage so some episodes will do one part maybe we'll in other ones we'll bring it further so let's continue on this one and this one may actually be longer than a half an hour I'm always going to say, let's just keep them to a half hour minimum. If I want to keep drawing and painting, some of these may just be pretty long. So we'll just, we'll just go with that. So I actually play my own music that doesn't get recorded. So I do like to hear music while I paint. So just to let you guys know, I usually do have these videos up with just my voice talking. Feel free to put your own music on in the background to kind of add to it if you want. Everyone has different tastes. Okay, so basically looking at from where we started last week, which you guys can look at the last video in the playlist as we worked on this one. I kind of coming back to it with fresh eyes since I haven't looked at it in a few days. So right away, I feel like I want to bring the form out a little bit. I want to change some of the shapes on his head. Some things on his head I'm not like super happy with. You know, I think they're fine, but they don't get me like too excited, right? So one thing I might do I start messing with some of these shapes. Sometimes I might check out the image size, see what size it is. You know, I usually like to have a piece kind of around like 5,000. Okay, so once we've gotten the resize, I might kind of go in and push a lot of this back. You might have seen this technique in some other videos. I kind of just make a layer the light color and I just kind of fade it. You can do this in so many different ways, but it's usually um, how I do it. So I may go back in and kind of redesign uh, part of it. Like I didn't really like his eyes or his nose or his mouth it was really like ill-defined. I think the placement of his head is fine. <clears throat> but I went around and found some reference. I found some like cool reference of like bugs and other stuff that kind of get you you know, inspire with some shapes, right? And like, what can we do? And I found a lot of like cool, like bug helmets and all this different kind of things that could be kind of neat. You know, I want to make his eyes a little bit larger. So I'm still going back in with like a lot of this line drawing. And I was trying to think as we were working on like, how much of this do we make? as like his actual body or is there actually parts of his suit coming out? Not super sure yet. I like to do a little mix of both, I think. And what I actually might do is kind of just work on one side and maybe we'll just mirror it and then we'll do some little tweaks to it to make it so it's not so symmetrical. We could do something like that. Sometimes I just kind of like browse around through a bunch of reference I found for some like nice shape design and ideas. I almost like don't want him to have a mouth. You know, something that always kind of freaked me out about aliens. And this is kind of like an alien demon. It's just a creature. It doesn't really have to be an alien. I'm still using some of the shape design we had or shapes we created from the initial sketch. That's why I don't like totally erasing. I like having some of the stuff here, right? That we can use. And I kind of like how the top was still happening. I just want to think about the shape. I, I like this kind of little crystal deal we had. But I do want to take this up to a uh, painting today as well. And then if you if you people are watching from the States, hopefully you, you all had a great Thanksgiving this week. I'm actually doing this after eating my Thanksgiving meal, so I am 
I am pretty full right now. I was careful not to go too overboard knowing we had to kind of relax and paint tonight. And I wouldn't just straight take a nap. And so I'm usually thinking about these shapes that like to the top of the head. Maybe it's too, too kind of was rounding, it was like too large on the top, possibly. I'm still exploring and learning these type of designs anyways. So I'm not just doing like, oh, here's another knight or sorcerer design. Something that I might have done a whole bunch. I'm trying to kind of break out of my comfort zone, you know. So I'm gonna raise this eye because I want to dupe this whole thing over right here. Let's just kind of grab it. You can see that like it's not totally centered, which is fine. It doesn't really need to be. I'm just going to copy and paste it and then uh, flip the horizontal on it. And I'll just kind of like overlay here. Then maybe it's a design that's closer that we might like. I'm not sure. I'll erase some of the stuff here. I think overall it's probably a shape design that I'm more happy with. Let's kind of figure out what this is. It's nice to kind of come back and do this though, just because it was really left unexplored last time. So I like that. I think we'd spend the time and really kind of figure out some of these designs. And that's why I really don't end up like control Zing or deleting a lot of layers. I just like to be able to see this stuff exist underneath it all, right? I think all these little layers of information that we keep underneath can just really add to it. And then as we paint more and more on top, it's just like, it's like cooking, right? All the little ingredients you put in, it's all kind of like will bubble up into the surface of your painting. People usually ask me about that. So like if I were traditional, they ask if I, I miss control Z, but control Z is not something I actually really use. I probably would save time if I did. If I do something like really egregious, I will uh, end up using it. I kind of think like right here, maybe we'll, these, these are kind of like little armor plates or something. We're just using using the uh, sketch of the background as information for it. We'll figure out these little shapes as well. And this thing kind of harnesses around these little, these little egg things. But since we mirrored the shape here, we can maybe add some little stuff in here that might just break it up a little bit so it's not so symmetrical. It's a little beakish at the bottom, which you're like, well, hmm, it's kind of like, be a little not what I'm shooting for. So like I said, I'm just looking at like different bugs and insects and some ideas like usually if you can take like a little shape here, a little shape there, you can just kind of add to it and you can really get it uh, figured out. Looks like he's got like buck teeth or something. I 
Maybe we just make this a solid. Actually, I kind of like it now. It actually looks like he has a mouth and a jaw. Yeah, so this could actually be like a bottom lip. I think that actually could work. Let's make it more obscure though. So it's not actually like a bottom lip, but there is kind of like where his mouth might open. What we haven't been doing though is flipping, which is not great. Let's give him a flip. You can kind of see how pushed over everything is. I wonder if we take this. I actually pasted the whole thing over. Which can be a little dangerous. I still don't control Z much, but I'm erasing quite a bit. Like I said, even at this stage, I don't mind being pretty messy with it all. All right. So also coming next week, this is a video I've been working on for a few days now. So my videos are, I'm actually putting a lot more time into each one. So before my videos, usually usually I could do in like a single night, but I'm really trying to put more time and focus into them. So I should have one coming out, I think around Monday or Tuesday about taking characters. And I'm gonna have uh, three characters prepped up, at least like the base versions and about adding armor and clothing to them. So basically, one base body type and say if we're doing it for like a game I was working on if I had to make a tank DPS or like a melee or a caster and kind of apply armor and how I apply clothing and then different pieces of armor to a character that's what the video is going to be about and then I also have our, our first piece for the Patreon is finished our Asterin piece so that will be going out to our Patreon uh, people next week and then i'll have the full time lapse with commentary on the channel next week also so i'm pretty excited or at least i'll have to squeeze it in there because then the drawing with dave will be out on friday also i want to spend like a ton of time sketching only because we did that last time i'd rather show everybody kind of how we start applying light and color to this right because i think honestly i could if I was doing this for work, I would spend at least a few hours on the stage. Like really slowly getting into all these little details and figuring out where the shapes might be. But let's get some of this out. Break that one up. And I wanted this one to be like a very different kind of shoulder piece. There could be like more tubes and stuff on them also. I'm trying to think about like how asymmetrical I want to make them. Get some of these on here, right? Like this. Still following some of these shapes that we had in this sketch below. I said we're really just kind of do another stage of definition. 
I guess even at this stage, I really don't mind being messy at all. I assume a lot of these lines are going to be covered up. What we can do too is really make these um, these little bubble things kind of like a glowing light, which can we can use to light the uh, character also, which would be kind of neat. He's got a lot of them. Kind of have these come out. Go, bring those out. I'd like to, yeah, we'll bump into more of the value and color stuff in about 20 seconds, I'd say. I think we can figure out a lot of this after the fact here. I just want to kind of get it redefine his face. It was kind of bothering me. I still think there's a lot of things we can do differently with the face, but maybe I'll do something even completely different once we get into actual painting. You can always keep editing it, editing it. Just something you have to do a lot with your art director anyway. Like he may not like, not like certain parts, so you're always kind of like tweaking one little thing. Okay, let's bring this, start to bring this into an actual painting. So we can leave these layers like this. You could flatten them all down, it doesn't really matter. And what I'm gonna do is just make a multiplier layer. That fixed up, I'm still using the DG main brush. I'm just gonna add like a little bit of a shadow. Still in the black and white. And then we'll jam into the color. I just want this really kind of like strong, direct, like almost spotlight above him. And so I'm kind of finding these little shadow areas underneath. Yeah, this might actually hit a lot of the shadow too. But you can be pretty messy with this stage too. It all depends how much time you have. You can keep it clean if you want, but I don't think we really need to. And I'll race with the airbrush sometimes just to smooth out a little bit of some of these areas. And we'll kind of grab this down here, do the same thing. Drop the opacity on this a little bit more. There we go. The one thing I think, I think his head might be too large. But let's start painting it and then we can shrink it down. Okay, so I think for the whole background, I want it kind of like a, like a dark blue, maybe like a tiny bit of violet in it. And I think I'll just gradient some color in there. Uh, let's just do it like on an overlay. Put that on. Sometimes I have to make sure. Okay, it's on. just make sure it's on RGB. I'll cut this area.
<clears throat> okay, we're recording. All right, I'm just gonna plop, probably go to overlay layer here. And sometimes that can get a little crazy on you. All right. And one thing I've been doing also, I've been doing this for like the past year, and you've probably have seen this in some other videos, is I do this kind of like reddish tone light layer. Uh, I'm probably gonna start doing it a lot less, just cause I, I might be overdoing it lately, a lot of stuff, but sometimes it, I feel like it breaks up some of the, just kind of straight gray that I have of the line drawing underneath. And sometimes it, it adds like a little bit of vibrancy to it, right? I just want to be careful that parts of my painting are getting overly warm because of this, right? Which could be happening. I don't mind, I kind of like how it's going to be kind of blooming up with the red above, especially if we light it very, uh, a lot like that. So now we think of a color for him, I think of like this kind of, we're going to have a bunch of different colors, but maybe like this little bit of green. And usually we'll start just adding color with the uh, multiply layer. I can actually grab like a so the pure solid brush and start jamming it in. Like I drop the opacity on a lot of this stuff. Once I see that starting to look too saturated, I drop it back. Because one thing I don't want to do is get it too saturated off the bat. I like to build it up slowly throughout the painting so we can kind of discover our areas of color that we want to pop, all that stuff. It's e it's a lot better to build it up and then having gone too far in a majority of the piece and then you find yourself in a kind of a weird situation where you're trying to push back areas and that gets a lot harder. Uh, you can be kind of messy with this stage too. Since I want to kind of gradient him into different colors. Otherwise, I think if you just keep him this one shade of green, it would be kind of boring. So I'm just gonna jam and just color this whole thing in. We may just kind of like paint the top half of this character, just for time. I wish I could do whole character paintings, fully rendered in an hour. And that's a, a real long-term goal. Only because I like these being live and not full time lapse. We'll have fully rendered pieces. So the um, the piece says the time lapse is coming out next week. I have the entire thing recorded. And it probably is like about a twenty-hour piece that I'm going to squash down to about. I would say I'll we'll probably have it about an hour. I'll try to do as much commentary as possible. And I figure we can talk a lot about that in the commentary for that one. Trying to figure out maybe we'll get some more of these violet colors around. I like to pop it out in different areas so it's not just in these little purple things. And maybe that kind of will go gradient into this other color into these things. But I think it'd be cool if his eyes were not that color though. I think they should be like really bright, but we'll build that up. You know, and you could lasso tool this and color it in. I like to just do it by hand. Uh, I think th that um, I probably would be faster if I just did it the other way. But it's okay. Let me just kind of grab the whole layer. We'll control H so we don't have to see our marching ants. And I just kind of airbrush in some gradients with it. 
just so we get a little bit of different color here. So it's not all the exact same. And this is usually the part of a painting where I start to get pretty excited. Or like, oh, some ideas are kind of coming through. Maybe we'll pepper in some of these violets on the side of his face are going to be lit from these little postural things. That'd be pretty cool. Maybe we'll get that hit around the eye, even if the eye is going to be like a brighter orange. And I guess the same thing goes with these up here. I don't even know what these were going to be. We'll, maybe we'll keep them this color also. It'd be kind of neat. Maybe that's just part of the arm behind him is not actually his head, right? Okay, so I'm gonna create a new layer. And this is where I'm gonna kind of, it's almost like I'm jumping ahead a little bit just to give me some ideas, right? So let's go to an overlay layer. And like I said, you wanna be careful with this stuff. You don't wanna go too crazy, too fast. And I'm just kind of thinking of the luminescence of all these that might be on them, right? And how it's gonna affect some of all this stuff, the light on him and how much we actually wanna do. Maybe that light comes up into these. Let's we'll see how much hits everything, you know. But I like still being messy in here too. And we can also figure out what we're actually gonna be doing with these eyes. Here we go. Okay, let's make another layer, because you know I love making about a billion layers. And this is usually kind of a stage where I may start doing a lot of cleanup, right? So there's all this kind of messiness in the eyes and all that's right here with all the sketch. The colors are dirty. I kind of want to just color pick like a straight area. It's like you're just painting over it, right? Like, let's just clean up the eye completely. And then maybe I'll take some of this darker color here and then actually go back in and blend real quick. This kind of, you know, shadow underneath the eye. And then we'll grab some of this violet, bring it a little bit lighter, because I think in the end it'll be pretty bright. We'll have it kind of reflecting into those bottom parts of the eye there. You know, who knows? We might have more kind of like more highlights in it later. Who knows how these bug eyes work? You know, we could even think of some weird shapes. I don't want it to look like a, like a large pupil, so it might be something we play with. Same up here, we can really kind of start cleaning up a lot of it. If there's some stuff that just kind of visually bothers you, which cer certainly happens to me. This is absolutely like just clean up. All right, I think we're definitely gonna focus on this kind of region, this whole area right here for this video. And let's try to get as polished as we can. And I think that'd be a really good process to kind of hang out and this is actually really fun to work on. I love this part of the painting and seeing what we can do here. Let's bring this out. Trying to figure out, trying to figure out where a lot of these kind of shadow shapes lay underneath it all. If you guys are new to the channel, thank you so much for finding this little art corner we have. If you like this type of stuff, definitely uh, subscribe. It, it means a lot. I love uh, seeing the channel grow lately. You guys have been very, very amazing. You know, the more it grows, the more and more time I can dedicate to it, which is fantastic. We got guests in the house. 
You hear doors creaking with the holidays and all. So we're kind of darken all this out. I'm gonna try to figure out this kind of like shape that might exist underneath. And it's almost like you're dealing a little bit less with line. I feel like I mentally have an idea of how I want it to look, so I'm just trying to figure that out. Something I can be happy with here. And usually I'm just grabbing a lot of these value and color of what exists in here right now. I don't feel like I need to branch out too far. Maybe yeah, that's something simple in here that we can use. All right, it's all this. You have to be careful about kind of, if you're lighting all these sides and air, these little ribbon light areas, you really can do too much and it'll really flatten everything out. So always gotta be careful then. Let's clean up some of these little details. I do like to change the color quite a bit so it's not like, oh, this is the same orange and it's just like a little bit more of a highlight of that orange, right? I think it's important to kind of keep building that range. We'll take the eraser and kind of erase that shadow back in. Go back to the DG main brush, because that is what we do. It's the same way like on this top area, like I really want it to seem pretty lit at the top. We're pretty much going to be erasing mostly line drawing at the top to really make it feel like it goes back in space. It's really just kind of like a, taking your time, blending all this stuff around, cleaning up what you want, Big part of my painting is I like this feeling of having kind of control over all these little details and areas. Like even how these shadow areas are formed. Like I like the happy accents to exist that I created from all these layers from underneath. But once I'm kind of editing it and adding color and highlights, I have kind of total control over it. Which I feel like I didn't used to have. I think that was something that's just come over time as you get more kind of confident in your brush making. You'll notice that more and more. And so even how all these little areas kind of start to create their own shine and kind of identity to his armor. Right, and then up here we can even keep bringing it up further and further. You know, this part, it's always so much fun because you're really just constantly exploring. It will take some of that same highlight color and bring it down here so it's actually hitting like these little lips. You know, and this is another one thing, you don't wanna to go too crazy, you don't wanna just like highlight every single crack that you see, right? It can just get too much. I think you always want to remember there's like a, a focal point in the piece, parts that you want to focus on, right? And parts that you want the viewer to focus on.
And sometimes you really just have to go in a whole bunch of times, keep cleaning, keep firing out those little those little forms that you like. Like these almost look like little ears back here or something. I'm not sure what they are. But they're kind of cool. I hope you guys don't like a don't mind a longer episode. It's kind of just me rambling most of the time, but I'd like to get a lot of this to a polish. I got nothing going on tonight, so you guys have some free time on this Friday. Feel free to throw this out in the background. I'm just gonna see what we can do here. So I do apologize if there are kind of moments or big gaps in the content where I don't seem to be talking as much. I do try to share my thoughts of what I'm doing as often as I can. And this is something that will edit and evolve over time. We'll get better and better at this. This is my uh, new favorite part of the channel. And I feel like this is a pretty unique piece of content for uh, artists to watch on here. It has a complete, you know, start to finish, or even if it's just the starts without the time lapse, without, you know, a lot of craziness, and there's not like weird effects and a lot of jokes going around. You know, we're all just trying to learn how to kind of push our skills a little bit further. And I know for me, seeing other people and other artists in their process helps me so much. It can totally change how you approach things. And that's really the important part here, right? We're all just trying to make in this kind of crazy, crazy career we've chosen for ourselves. But it's, it's worth the craziness, right? Uh, also, uh, next week's commentary video, Speed Labs, I should be able to give everyone an update kind of how the transition of freelance is going, all that stuff. December 1st is actually when I start going part-time. So I'll be going part-time freelance and part-time at, at the uh, studio. But I've kind of have been having to double up this month. So this month has been real crazy. Because I've had to get the ball rolling on it before December actually got here. So I'm just kind of pushing the highlights a bit more and more. Just with my own brush, I don't need to kind of airbrush this whole top area. I'm kind of just doing it little parts at a time here. It's got some crazy crystal. There we go, we got some of that. Let's see how bright we actually make these little things. Now it looks like this area too might probably get a bunch of this purple. That's pretty cool. I like the I like some of these shapes. I like the style we have going. And that's usually like enough. It feels like that just kickstarts the piece for you, right? Every time you're working on a piece, you're like, oh, some things are working. Like this area right here, like whatever the piece you are on the piece, like oh, this face or this eye or oh man, this nose. I'm finally doing a nose I really like. It is seriously one of the best feelings ever. And that's when you just don't want to go to sleep and you just want to hang out and sketch all night. So 
So I'm trying to smooth this out because I want to feel like the light's still coming around. If you make it too kind of flat and around the edge, it's really going to feel like it's the type of rim light and flattening the head out. It's still a little flat anyway, so they're going to have to tweak. Oh, where the light's hitting all that. So we should do a flip. The flip might be a little crazy. It's a little wonky. But for this type of creature, it being a little wonky is probably not the worst. Like maybe we can add one of these in. It always depends like how realistic you want to render these two. You know, it also depends on the team. Some concept teams are really gonna want you to go super real. But my style the past, you know, past year or so has really gone away from that. See, I'm really just kind of wandering around, cleaning up things, finding little things to add to him that could have, might add to his personality and his design. What if we just cut this out so you just actually see the background? It might be kind of neat. Do the same thing over here. this crack all the way around. He took some damage. I think we're gonna do and grab an overlay layer. I'm just gonna have some like focus color and light on him. I might make it a little bit more yellow. Oops. It's around the center area. It's really gonna be like a big part of our focal point here. I'll just fade it down a little bit, you know. Get a little bit under these little eye areas. Sometimes you can even add another one. And I can really drill some little points in, like here. Maybe right up here. Like I said, you just want to be careful with using some layers in the style. Because it can get wild, it can get wild fast. I may go back in and push some of that contrast again. So say, around his nose, we're really taking these dark areas and have really gotten kind of bright here. So they're kind of like around here. I might take them and push them back. Put some of these areas down here. Going back around, it's not like actually, it's more kind of, it's got a good amount of red in here. I'm also, I think I have to calibrate my Cintiq soon. I do believe I see colors a little bit differently than other monitors, and I have to fix that on this. That is a whole process that's a real pain in the butt. Most calibration units I've used, like professional ones, I feel like they've made it worse in the past. Can drive you a bit mad. All right. 
let's kind of tweak these out. And you really can spend like a lot of time really polishing these little areas, but I do want to keep this in a semi-reasonable time. Like you can really spend the time and figure out where like all the lights hitting on all these little points down here with all these little things that are hanging out. And you can figure out like lots of cool little areas. And that would make the piece really, really interesting. Like what's actually catching all this light that's coming down. And that's like the stuff that's really fun to explore. Like how much does this part underneath his nose to come out a little bit so it's going to catch some of that light um how reflective is this kind of like carapace same with these we kind of go over to these things right now It's gonna just kind of color pick a lot of this stuff around here, just to fill it in. And these are something that probably take like a little bit longer to flesh out, especially if you want them to feel like little globules of liquid or little sacks of something. But these seem like things that would really make your piece pop if you could spend the time to really flesh them all out. I think they know, it could be a really cool part of it. So we're just gonna kind of flesh them out kind of in a basic level here. Average kind of blending as quick as possible. Because then you can find some really kind of nice areas of getting really saturated on these little inner parts. You get some really cool stuff happening. Like down below. Because basically you can spend just as much time really figuring out his armor or his suit or his body, whatever, which one you want. What's cool, this is kind of all originated, originated from that um, silhouette design tutorial we made. That's why I really like spending the time to take something we made just in that and, and seeing where it goes, seeing like a whole process. So hopefully these videos are kind of like a, like a two for one. You're seeing just kind of like the process of sketching, but it actually has like a purpose too. I think I always have in my head, I've just been a concept artist for too long. That I feel like there's some strange pathway of trying to figure this stuff out and how it works and <laughs> who would make it pass to. I feel like there's some type of purpose it always has to serve. Add a little bit to these here. I'm 
not sure why these kind of like, not really ears, but I like this kind of hit of blue on them. It just seems interesting to me. Trying to tone down some of this purple. I, they're not blasting so much light on them that it's just going to be lighting everything here. I might change to kind of shape this a little bit. And same thing I can always do like I did from the beginning. I can always kind of dupe it over. I have like, oh, I do like how that kind of side looked. You know, and sometimes these are just shortcuts you kind of just learn after kind of being under deadlines for so long that you can just find little shortcuts and, you know, you can kind of just quickly jam in some other shapes. Kind of make it feel like a little bit different. Let's bring this shadow down. Same with this stuff. I'm not sure about this little kind of tube attachment thing we started to make. I think tubes and stuff on these armors are pretty fine, but it doesn't really fit his design. Just kind of food for thought. It just seems like a lot of place. This is usually my process. I do figure out a lot of work as I go. Which, you know, sometimes work. I can save time that way. Or it can be a total disaster and I waste a lot of time. <laughs> so I really do think finding like a workflow that just works comfortable for you is going to be really important. Bring some of these highlights down. Bring in all this stuff here. I do like the idea of this kind of light hitting from up top, so I like to kind of bring that through through a lot of this. We'll bring that over into all these too. Okay, let's try darkening right here. Just want to get a little textual detail in here as we go, so it's not super flat, but we don't need to spend a ton of time really going crazy in here. Not for this at least. Some of these darker shapes in. Like, there should be something on these that kind of feels like it's holding them in at least. I feel like they fall out right now. You just want to think about like a lot of those little details. Like, is it reasonable that these would hold in, or are they strange? Who knows? It's probably pretty weird, but same down here. We can maybe just have like another. Thing that feels like it might hold it. Who knows what you're doing, Alien? All right, I want to clean up up here. I 
I actually want to darken it a little bit right here. So we have a little bit of contrast over the top of his head and these things coming off from the, his back armor, I guess. Just slowly blend this in. We'll get some little cuts and little extra things of detail where this light might be hitting. What I'm going to do is really kind of darken up this background at one point here. Like I said earlier, you probably would save time if you kind of like lasso this stuff out and you just grab these shapes. But right now it's just kind of a process I kind of work with. I wouldn't mind adapting my process into something a little more time saving in the future. Cause you can tell even with this process I do now, I do spend a lot of time kind of cleaning up these underlying sketches. Uh, but sometimes the underlying sketches help me a lot but sometimes it, it uses a lot of my time as well. Just cleaning this stuff up. some of this too so we kind of match up those center pieces Some of this in. I'm really just thickening up the size of my brush so it's almost like the exact area I'm trying to paint. Okay, I'm gonna clean up these edges. I'm probably gonna dupe this side into the other one. Let's clean up these sides. Let me grab this, bring it over here. Really, I'm just looking at time savings right now, but we can kind of erase this outside area. And we kind of drag it around and warp it a little bit different. And we'll just paint clean it up again. I'll we'll just make a little bit of marks just to change up the feel. Some cuts and little broken things. Okay, what I want to do actually is really Grab, let's see here. A pretty dark blue here. 
Go to multiply. I kind of want to just like blanket this thing a little bit. And then take the eraser and just kind of erase out of it a little bit. I'm kind of just creating a little bit more of a focal light. And the contrast a bit. We really could do that to this whole top part. So we get that same effect as before. We'll do it right to these top things. Just so it's a little bit stronger than it was before. Grab an overlay layer again. I'm going to grab probably the airbrush. And it is like a kind of a definitely like a cool light hitting everything, you know. I don't mind the light seeming like kind of like poofs off it, you know, because it's so bright, maybe. And you usually don't have to kind of mirror everything as much as we have been doing. The light's probably gonna hit the kind of top of this thing too, right? And then like get like a little reflected light there. And let's grab the same thing to these. It's the same deal where it's those the dark lines at the top of these little dagger spikes is probably taken away from it. We might have to go back in and kind of paint them out. We just have this kind of like nice blue hue and light coming off the top. Which is kind of interesting. You can see how it looks on the top of his head. I'm gonna have to bring the light really kind of around. kind of hits the stuff. Let me go and make another layer. I'm gonna go up here and I just wanna clean up some of this, these dark lines. I think we just make them all kind of the brightest part. If we do have any kind of breaks in it, they should be pretty light. Like that or something. There we go. I'm kind of how this stuff's going to curve around. We can even go like a little bit more of their highlights. Why not? And just kind of create these little highlight shapes. And I usually do these weird little kind of cuts. I always kind of end up doing these weird little shapes everywhere. And we can do it on the, a little bit on these things, just a tiny bit. Sounds like some little bit of kind of visual interest to break it up like that, you know. I don't mind being a little messy with it. That's probably gonna happen up here on these two. Let's grab some of that highlight, maybe pop it on the eye. 
that kind of bright hit right there. Now you could always kind of add these little speckles of highlights around too. Might make it seem like it's more wet or, or what. But I think this is gonna be pretty close to wrapping it. We've actually been going uh, quite a bit of time, uh, easily over an hour, guys. Uh, I really hope you like this process that we've kind of shown today. Uh, it's definitely more of a kind of an in-depth into bringing a sketch more into a final render. Obviously, we didn't uh, tackle the entire character. And I really think you could spend a lot more time figuring out these shoulder parts. Um, different parts of his whole body. Even this little kind of tube thing, it looks like a brain on a tube, which is kind of weird. Uh, but you kind of just look at it, every little part and you can always keep tweaking. I feel like you're never locked into anything. You can always keep changing. Like I'm so much happier with the bottom part of his face when we started. It's one thing I always try to remind myself, if you're not happy with an area, erase it and do it again. Keep doing it again until you're happy with every little piece that you make, right? So and then at the end, you can just take all your layers, squash them down, because we're just gonna keep painting over it anyway, right? So uh, thank you guys so much for this whole process from this sketch to take it to where we are now. You guys are amazing, seriously. Thank you so much. Uh, definitely subscribe to the channel if you like this type of stuff. Uh, I guess hit the bell so you get notified when we come out with new ones, but there'll be a new drawing with Dave every single Friday. And then we should have a uh, clothing and armor piece coming soon, as well as our first Patreon piece and time lapse. And that's gonna be uh, delivered to our Patreons next week. All right guys, thank you so much. I hope you had a great week this week. Uh, definitely post down comments down below what you wanna see for next week. Guys, thank you so much. Have a great day today.